Hi, my name is Mr. D and today I want to take a look at finding absolute maximum and minimum values of a function. So we have find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum values of f of x equals 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 12x plus 1 on the interval from negative 2 to 3. And keep in mind that we're doing this on a closed interval. So the method we're going to use for this problem is called the closed interval method. And simply put, we use this on a continuous function. And the first thing we do is we find the critical values of the function. And then we plug those back into the function along with the endpoints of our interval. Now once we generate the, this list of values, we're looking for the greatest value in our list, and that's our absolute maximum. And we look for the smallest value in our list, and that's our absolute minimum. So to get started, the first thing we want to do is find the derivative of f of x. So we're looking at f prime of x equals, and now we have 3 times 2, so we have 6x to the 3 minus 1, so we have 6x squared. Now we have 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, x to the 2 minus 1 is 1, so we have minus 6x, and then we have 1 times negative 12 is negative 12, and then we have x to the 1 minus 1, which just generates a 1, so we're left with negative 12. And remember, the derivative of any constant is 0, so the derivative of 1 is 0. So now that we have our f prime of x, remember the critical values of a function are where the first derivative is equal to 0 or where it's undefined. But since we have a polynomial, this polynomial is defined for all real numbers, so we're looking for where the derivative is equal to 0. So we're going to set 6x squared minus 6x minus 12 equal to 0. And right away we could factor out a 6 and we're left with x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. And from this step we're going to break this quadratic down into two factors. We have x minus 2 times x plus 1 equals 0. And now from here the next step is to set each factor equal to 0. So we have x minus 2 equals 0 and we have x plus 1 is equal to 0. For the first factor we just add 2 to both sides. This tells us that our first critical value is that x equals positive 2. And our second critical value we find by subtracting 1 from both sides. And we have x equals negative 1 as our second critical value. But now remember, to use the closed interval method, we're plugging in the critical values and we're also plugging in the endpoints back into the original function. So we're going to list them in order from least to greatest. Our smallest number in the list is negative 2. So we're going to plug in x equals negative 2. Then we're going to plug in x equals negative 1. Then we're going to plug in x equals 2. And finally we plug in x equals positive 3. Remember, we're plugging in the critical values and the endpoints. So we're going to plug in these four numbers into our original function. So the first one I'll do out the entire way. We're going to plug in negative 2. So we're looking at f of negative 2 equals, we have 2 times negative 2 cubed minus 3 times negative 2 squared minus 12 times negative 2 plus 1. And now when we simplify this, we have f of negative 2 equals negative 2 to the third is negative 8 times 2 is negative 16. And now we have negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 times negative 2 is a positive 24. And then we have plus 1. So now we have 25 minus 28 is negative 3. So f of negative 2 is equal to negative 3. So this is one of the important values that we're going to analyze at the end. Now we're going to plug in f of negative 1. We're evaluating the function at negative 1. And we can set this equal to 2 times negative 1 to the third minus 3 times negative 1 squared. We'll just make this a little bit bigger. We have negative 1 squared. And then we have minus 12 times negative 1 plus 1. And when we simplify this, f of negative 1 should equal positive 8. So now next we're plugging in positive 2, so we're looking at f of 2 equals 
2 times 2 to the third minus 3 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 1. And once again, I'm, for this I'm just going to have you guys work out the arithmetic, but when we work out these expressions, we should wind up with f of 2 equals negative 19. So now we only have one more value to look at. We're plugging in x equals 3. So we have f of 3 equals 2 times 3 to the third minus 3 times 3 squared. And then we have minus 12 times 3 plus 1. And when we simplify this, f of 3, we should wind up with negative 8. So now the last step. As we said before, once we have these function values, we have to find the greatest value and the smallest value, and those are going to be our absolute maximum and minimum. So we look in this list and notice that positive 8 is our greatest value that we generate, and negative 19 is our smallest value that we generate. So if we want to write our final answer, we'll write this off to the side. We know that our absolute maximum we said that it occurred when x equals negative 1 so we'll say that our absolute maximum is f of negative 1 equals positive 8 so this is one part of our answer and now our absolute minimum and when we look through our list again We'll see our absolute minimum occurred at x equals positive 2, and f of 2 was equal to negative 19. So these two are part of our final answer. We have an absolute maximum at x equals negative 1, f of negative 1 equals positive 8, and our absolute minimum occurs at x equals positive 2, where f of 2 equals negative 19. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on finding absolute maximum and minimum values of a function. Thank you all for watching and I hope that this was helpful.